It's another classic matchup here on the Pronoco YouTube channel where we do CMBW castovers. We have Ben Taberski, Biddy B himself, against The Shambler. Once again, reprising their Protoss versus Terran roles. This one, I'm told, is showing improvement. We'll see what that means. This map is Ashy Altercation, which is a map actually by Ben himself. So we'll see if, uh, you know, we can take a quick look at the map while the openers are underway. I do see more, perhaps more standard uh, resource layouts and whatnot, which uh, speaks to, I guess, some sort of uh, growth in that sense. Now, I believe that this is actually a buildable tile now in CMBW. I would imagine it must be. Otherwise, why would you ever make a base like that exactly? Um, I will note that we have some pretty good room for turrets behind the mains uh, and that uh, maybe the rush distance is actually a little bit on the smaller side. Perhaps? Maybe? Yeah, you don't really have a super massive uh, like defender's advantage here because there's no cliff uh, advantage, that is. Whereas down here, if you take this as your natural, you do. And this is a double gas base. So you're very incentivized to, I think. This one's got a little bit more minerals, but nothing too spectacular. And so, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. To me, that seems like a fairly straightforward situation. Uh, now, we do see a Shambler go for a very fast reservoir, which is a notable divergence from maybe what is normal. He will be chasing down the scribe that was harvesting some gas, maybe uh, disrupting some of the mining operations. Ooh, 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 ooh. Very close, very close. Could have actually gotten the kill there. And I think at this point, Ben I should know that he needs to actually intervene with some of his other idle workers. He will go ahead and throw down a warden. I'm not sure if Shambler will have caught that. He will have already taken care of Ben's scout on his side of the map. So that's an initial setup and actually going for a bunker. So... You know, maybe just recognizing that there's the propensity for Protoss to that go gateway first to go Dracodins. It's actually going to be a Zealot, so he doesn't really have much to worry about there, actually. Can uh, easily kite. A second bunker, you would have to imagine that maybe one of those is going to be offensive. Uh, but maybe Shambler is just preparing to get owned in the early game, you know, guarding against that potential. We do have an Ecclesia stout, so maybe Ben going to be trying for something more on the sustained side. Uh, obviously, we do remember him overbuilding Wardens in one of the previous matchups. He's going to walk in here and, and see that there's two bunkers being set up. And, you know, fair play to him. He's still experimenting and he's still figuring stuff out. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to break that bunker line, especially if it remains at only two. But there will be a third one being put over here. And obviously, as the author of the map, Ben will know that he can sort of wrap around if he so desires. But at the very least, his early gateway force is going to sit here and contain his opposing, his opposition. Just because now, as Terran, you're basically stuck on the one base. Uh, this is where Shambler going for that early reservoir and then a very safe opener afterwards is going to allow him to maybe spike up to a higher level of gas. He is getting Cyprians, which is the right move if you're under duress. But in this particular case, he's actually not being attacked. He's also not scouting, so he doesn't know that he's not being attacked or heavily contained or anything. Uh, so some more Ecclesiasts and a Lattice behind this. It looks like maybe uh, Ben doesn't want to expand off the back of his contain. He just wants to sit here and, and enjoy the, the luxury there. We do have a second barracks going down and more Cyprian. So again, like Shambler's not really using the gas that he's getting. And to be honest, he doesn't really have a gas advantage anyway because he's not actually harvesting from the ridge. So, uh, I mean, neither is Ben, I suppose. So maybe in that sense, he does have a gas advantage. The Ecclesia is just checking over here what's going on in the bottom left. By the way, for people who don't know, you can actually use the custom trigger using the comments. Uh, the trigger, our custom triggers are all done through trigger comments. And so you can use uh, set player name and set player force name or set force name, I think it is. Um, you can use that to change the name. So obviously in this case, we have the player names being the players themselves, but you can change this force name to just players uh, using the trigger. Uh, and then you keep the normal spawns in parentheses for the uh, force name in the lobby, but you actually modify it in here. So it's not listed here when we're actually playing or watching or whatever. Nexus going down. Obviously, we love to see that. Uh, that will be an expansion. Now, it looks like Shambler's just maybe scouting around. Maybe he was going to try to take a base, but he's going to confirm that there are indeed some Protoss forces over here. Ecclesiast checks in on this side as well. He's not really going to be much of a threat. And yeah, he's just going to maybe bunker creep forward or something. To Not a huge amount of ground gained here, but at the very least, it could maybe open him up to being you know dropped or harassed or whatever. Uh, we do have another Drakadin going in to the production queue, so there will be eventually three Dracodins over there, and that is eventually three. Some vassals popping out as well, no rally point on the lattice, so we'll see if that gets changed later. And a fourth bunker, so Chandler really wants to hold on to his bio, 
he doesn't want to go into fulcrum tech or something. And normally I would say, okay, whatever, but he's already spent the gas for the Cyprians. And so it feels like maybe, maybe he thinks that there's more, you know? Maybe he thinks that there's, uh, you know, more stuff or whatever. Maybe, maybe he's worried that actually he will soon be descended upon by the unwashed hordes. Now, the second base is finished now, so we will see presumably a worker transfer. We actually have a third warden going down, an Artosis pylon. We love to see those. People who don't know, that's uh, a single pylon powering a bunch of things. So here come the bunkers. They'll uh, be tickled a little bit here. Nothing too crazy. Obviously, there is a mason here to repair. Uh, but while that's happening, of course, some vassals are massing up. We do have some more coming. And uh, I think, I, I mean, we can just do some quick maths here. Obviously, with 60 HP, if you want to one-shot masons, you need six vassals. Uh, or, sorry, with six damage, you need ten vassals. I don't know where I was coming from that. Uh, math is obviously my very, very strongest suit, as you might imagine. Another command center being dropped. Okay, so the, the Im intention is very much clear. Uh, Shambly does want to expand and, and escape the contain. Bunker creeping forward over there. What is the plan of action for Ben then? He's already missed his window where the vassals could damage the worker line because the watchdogs are now in place. So assuming those don't uh, lift off to relocate, his vassals are basically not going to accomplish anything. And we see a very a bog standard opener, really. As, uh, Protoss does a little bit of a, a pressure to contain the, uh, the Terran, but not really able to get much else done. Now, at this point... Defender's advantage using the uh, cliff over here and the bunkers creeping ever for further forward. I think as soon as you catch them in transit, you especially with the, the Drakadin count that he has here, he could definitely be pressuring this. Like, he could have definitely reacted a little bit more aggressively. And as soon as he walks in and sees all of these watchdogs, he should probably just, you know, pop away with a few worker kills to his name. And, uh, oh, he's actually going to go for the, the watchdog, which is bold, but actually there's no response from Shambler, so he can just hold position here and cut down all of the the workers and uh, definitely force in it, you know some movements here uh, it looks like he is hold positioning but obviously they're a little bit derpy when they're under attack from something that exceeds their range oh we even saw a bug there so apparently the uh the fix for uh what df did wasn't uh, full fully foolproof but at the very least it wasn't massive uh as soon as a cleric comes in or whatever that that kind of thing wouldn't matter a uh, bit unfortunate obviously but at least we got some reproduction we know hey Actually, it's a lot rarer, but it can still happen. Uh, some sort of retaliation play or whatever. And so, yeah, he's forced some watchdogs out. He killed, like, one or two masons. He is going to try to commit to this. Uh, not a bad situation, especially with the Zealot and the Ecclesiast taking a lot of damage. However, obviously, um, the follow-up was really rough. He had some Dracodins decolliding. He wasn't really microing or focus firing. Uh, it looked like maybe he was chasing the infantry that were in the back, but he wasn't really doing anything to the bunkers themselves before the masons showed up to repair. And he's still massing up vassals, which we've already seen are not going to accomplish too much. He's also not harvesting gas from the natural. And, uh, you know, he still prevented a command center from going down. So as far as we know, like, you know, Shambler does not have the eco advantage. He's up and... Oh, I was actually down in workers. Never mind. I misread the top right there. So obviously at this point we're going to see some tickling and we should see a Drakadin. Oh, maybe not. I thought maybe one of them would go down, but not low enough. Now at this point, these two Drakadins are going to sit here and guard this base, but this is the more vo uh, valuable base, right? Like we, this is the one that we want to take the most as players because it has all the gas. So in this particular case, uh, we definitely see, you know, there's an opportunity to snipe the Mason. Uh, there's not enough Drakadins here because the other two are over here. So you can't actually bust this bunker. And now there's a bunch of Cyprians coming in just to clean things out. A couple more Cyprians over there. But this is more than enough to deal with this, especially since some of them were like, I think they were move tasked onto the, this one in the back that was attacking. And so they weren't even doing anything because that's Blizzard for you. Uh, but also if you task yourself to follow, that's whatever. We do have a, a third base coming up for Ben, but he's still not harvesting any gas. He's still not really teching out of the tier one lattice and triple gateway opener that he's got going. There is a... Uh, an Anseal out here. Now, Shambler is, like, obviously he's aware. He could maybe try to get bursted down or something. So he builds the Anseal, but he's also aware that Protoss has invisible detection with the Witness. However, he's not going to be aware that there is no detection out here for Ben. Uh, if you went for a Wraith to scout this out or something, that would obviously be one avenue of approach. Now, there is no third command center being put down for Shambler yet, but he is instantaneously capping these geysers, making it very, very clear that he wants to get the little bit of extra gas he needs to ascend up to tier two. And uh, from there, you know, we'll see what magic happens. 
couple of scribes are stationed onto that aquifer that is warping in in the main, but there's still no aquifers on the side bases. So <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm still like, obviously we know Shambler's macro sense is maybe a little bit more complete. He's got a couple of masons over here. So funny that I say that at that time. And it looks like he will be building something over here. He's got enough for the, uh, where's he going to build? He's going to build it with this mason, I assume. He has enough for the atlas. So there it goes. And a third bunker going down over there. Okay, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. I thought maybe he was going to make for an expansion. Honestly, as Terran, though, you are super happy with having uh, access to three capped geysers and the ridge. Uh, you don't really need to go beyond that, uh, especially the longer the game goes. And especially since you have height advantage here, what can all these Drakadins do, right? You're going to need something a little bit meatier. Um, now, he does have the aquifer capped in his main, as I mentioned. A couple of wardens coming down here just for anti-harass, but no aquifer capped over here and not even really harvesting gas. He's finally been harvesting gas over here, but in the natural, that is. Uh, that's always good, but, you know, he's definitely beyond the, the eight ball, behind the eight ball here, I think. Um, still only has one pylon in his main anyway, so <laughs> doesn't even have the build space, right, as Protoss to really put down any other production. Uh, so... That is its own sort of thing, its own sort of problem. Now he's he's still keeping an eye out, right? He he knows where all of the other bases are on the map, so he knows that he has one base advantage over Shambler. I don't think he realizes how quickly all of them have been capped, though. So he doesn't have the gas advantage even despite this, right? Because we're we're talking about what is it, eighteen? So we have twenty-one gas per return. Meanwhile, this is nine, uh, eight. So what would that be? 17. And then, dude, math is really hard. 20. Okay, so he barely has the gas advantage, right? One ridge would equalize that. But he's not as ahead as you would want him to be. Like, if he capped all of these geysers, he would be much further ahead just based on that. He will be taking another base, so he is wise to the idea that I have him contained. He's not moving out. You know, he's got the atlas down, but he's just getting captaincies now. Uh, obviously, you could know this information if you went for an embassy. <clears throat> but that will not be happening. Instead, we have an Astral Omen. Just one. He's finally harvesting gas over here. He shouldn't even take this base. Like, some people are shocked by that. But, like, if you have the ability, just take that base, too. Just take the, just take them all. Take all the bases. Definitely go for the gas-heavy ones, right? This one is uh, marginally less gas-heavy than this. But uh, there's an interesting mechanism with ridges in that the ridges themselves offer you, like... What are they? What is it? So because the ridges, two ridges equates to a capped geyser. If you have two ridges in a base and a geyser, then you instantly have a capped geyser as soon as you saturate the ridges. And then like in terms of like equal to the amount of worth or whatever. But it's just going to be a gateway heavy army. He's not even used the Astral Lumen just yet. So saving up for something else. He does actually almost have enough for a Monument of Sin, but I don't think he's actually going to go for it. I built the Qurong building. Oh, he was probably looking for the Argosy to grab the Didact, but in, in this particular case, he's going for the Sequestered Icon. So maybe he wants a Cantors or Architects or something to that effect. This attack force is just gonna get completely melted, obviously. There's uh, too many Cyprians in here. This is what, 10 Cyprians, I think? Yeah, and uh, then, you know, six Mavericks, which are just gonna help you soften them up afterwards. But you definitely need heavier du duty uh, attackers than that. You're thinking like Pariahs, Archons, something that moves fast enough that they can get on top. And then after that, you, you think of Dracodins, Atreuses, maybe even Optectons. The Optectons, obviously, <laughs> now that I think about it, the Optectons are just like totally rip shit in that engagement, especially if they had some witnesses or something to spot it for them. They, they would just take care of it from, from afar, right? Uh, all of this stuff is in the uh, coffers here, like could be spent, could be gotten. Um, instead, He's finally going to build another pylon. Holy shit. Look at all the stuff that he powered off of a single pylon. <laughs> I can't believe that. That's like, it, that's not flashy enough to be the thumbnail, but honestly, I kind of feel like it should be. Like, holy moly. Uh, but hey, we haven't really looked at Shambler's base for a while. So what's going on over here? He almost has enough. Uh, he doesn't have enough minerals for it, but he almost has enough gas for the next level. He has taken this base over here while we weren't looking. So he's going to be going up to three bases. Almost got this geyser capped. Yep, there it is. And not really using his uh, captaincies. But uh, with a thousand gas in the bank, you have to imagine he could be doing something mega. Maybe that's what he's going to do. He might just be banking up minerals now for um, the Daedala and then see what he can do from there, right? So that seems to be what's happening here. Nice bridge. 
I know, I know. I, I talk about it like this. This is totally fucked over here, right? Because he placed the ramp after the high lava. When you could like place the ramp and then edit the high lava in afterwards or whatever. But like the tiles being fundamentally broken. <clears throat> I mean, there's. You can say, oh, it's really hard to like place all these tiles, and I agree. But also, why why leave it totally messed up? You know what I mean? So, it can be fixed. It is a little silly, but it can be fixed. In fact, I, I encourage people to go check out the like the birthday maps or the scenario maps or whatever where that use some of these custom tiles and actually see how it was done in those ti those cases, and then start copying and pasting. Like, why not? No problem. So this Nancy is gonna move around and scout out the bases. I don't really like doing this as Terran. I prefer a Wraith because I don't like my opponent knowing that I know. Uh, but in this particular case, hey, what, what was even going on? There is a Monument of Sin. So that is where all of the money was spent. I'm really curious as to what's even happening. Like this gateway army is actually still going to be competitive versus a, you know, push out by the Shambler. But the Shambler's not really doing anything. Like he has all these captaincies. I don't know. Are there any madcaps? Are they in bunkers or something? He hasn't trained anything with his four captaincies until just now? Like, what the hell? That's so confusing. He built four captaincies, and this is the first time he's actually used them, as far as I can tell, unless, like, he used, the units died already, but... Yeah, I think so. I haven't seen any a single madcap anywhere, so I really don't know what's going on there. That's very bizarre. Um, but the Apostles are out, followed by some madcaps. Actually, it feels like maybe he doesn't have that many minerals. Like, the mineral income on this map might be a little bit biased towards some of the other bases, like this area where all the vassals are hanging out. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Monty was saying it is spinning. Uh, that wasn't even a, a proper syllable in the English language, but I hope you guys understood what I was saying. Uh, that means that a Star Sovereign will soon be out, but the data is just about finished. And you have to imagine that uh, there will be ion cannons somewhere. <laughs> is it mad about the getting mad about the pathing in your own map. Love that. Uh, I assume that's because this Drakadon died over here. Sentinels are up as well. I think actually with the Star Sovereign, like, if you attack it from, like, this right-hand side, you could, like, piece out the Sentinel first, then this bunker, then the Sentinel. Probably something like that. I'm surprised you don't have Sovereigns right now. Yeah, well, there you go. So he is going to try to commence the attack over here on the bottom left. And uh, the Drakadons are in a spot where they're not really doing too much damage. Like, that, one of the underrated aspects of bunkers is that even after the bunker dies, you still have combat units. So in this particular case, <coughs> especially since he didn't focus down this low HP bunker, what are the actual losses from Shambler's side? Some mining time, but nothing on gas. He still has all of his gas miners. Two Sentinels, a bunker, four Cyprians. That was what he lost. You can imagine that's not exactly what you wanted to suicide most of your gateway army for, or, uh, you know, like in exchange for, right? Star Sovereign is out and another one is constructing. He's got 2k minerals. So Ben could definitely drop down some grand libraries. He'll go for this base over here. He's um, not really saturated with the gases, right? Could have one more on the ridge, two more on the other. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Shambler's playing a very uh, safe, turtley game. But you can see where, all, obviously, there's like so many opportunities for him to potentially win by... <laughs> like actually, um, or sorry, there's so many opportunities for Ben to have struck some like killing blows or at least wound the Shambler. Come on, come on. All right, so the main problem is this could be very heartbreaking. I thought that dot was uh, another Star Sovereign, but it's not done yet. This could be very heartbreaking if the Sovereign walks into all of the, the advanced bio that has uh, regen, right? Here we go. Uh, uh. Ooh! Annihilated. <laughs> and then, anyway, meanwhile, right? Like, he's got all the vassals. That's going to obviously aggro the ion cannon. It's just one sovereign, though, and that's the problem. It will get shellacked by the ion cannon shortly. And it doesn't have the crowd control to really do much here. He should be moving it backwards. He's not going to. Oh, actually, on this side is where the Drakadon is, or where all of the gateway army is, right? He should still move it back. Yep, you should still turn it around. Yep, yep, there you go. <laughs> Ooh, narrowly escaped death. Holy shit. Oh, another one. 
Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. This is like the. This is um. This is unfortunate. That's what it is. Okay, he's gonna go for the glassing. It's not gonna reach really anything. It did manage to kill off the, like some of the bio, but that was it. And you get to enjoy the glassing ambient sound because obviously StarCraft doesn't know to just stop a sound when the unit dies apparently. I mean, it does sometimes, but doesn't other, t I don't know, it's a bit silly. Yeah, I mean, even with that, like, okay, he lost two Star Sovereigns, right? That's That can be considered as a very crippling loss. But if he had these this gas running, if he, like, he has fully saturated... Okay, this one could use another worker on that ridge. Uh, he hasn't capped these yet. He hasn't capped this yet. He could have, like, three or four Star Sovereigns to replace the ones that he lost. You know what I mean? I don't even know what's happening. I think uh, vassals are dying to ion cannons. But anyway, he could be, he could certainly be doing stuff, right? Obviously he misbought the Astral Omen. He bought the sequestered icon and then didn't use it. He hasn't trained anything from either of those structures. He does have an Atreus coming out of the Grand Library. He is capping those geysers. He's not capping these ones. He's not capping this one. He definitely needs multiple production queues of Star Sovereigns and he could afford it if he was using his gas, right? So that's probably the next big thing. I did see some commentary after the game was played where Ben was saying, like, what do I do or, or what did I do wrong or something? And one of the things Ben mentioned was that at the, like in the late game, his macro sense is lacking. And maybe that's what sort of, I, I mean, I, I don't want to put words in the guy's mouth, especially when we're describing his play, but I think that's what he said, something to that effect. And I definitely feel like, you know, he's he's using some units, right? He, he built some structures he's probably has never seen before. And he's building, you know, Star Sovereigns and whatnot. That Anseal goes down very quickly, although it will revive. And, uh, you know, I would just glass here if I'm him. Obviously, you don't want to necessarily suicide your Atreuses, but you're doing that anyway because they're just moving. They're, like, walking instead of attacking. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I think the Ion Cannons are locked. Oof! Just when you thought maybe you had the retreat. Just doesn't happen. Whoa! Oh my god, that can reach the Aquifer! Uh, uh, ooh! Somebody stole that Ion Cannon's kill. With enough Atreuses, you can BTFO the uh, Bio Force, by the way. Most people don't know that or, or care to find out. But, uh... Now, here come the uh, Bio taking down the Wardens. Or at least, in theory, that's what's going to happen here. <laughs> Fucking Ion Cannons. I didn't reach very far, as you can see. Hmm. <laughs> This is, I guess, fuck me, question mark? Well, I, I guess ion cannons are going to teach you a lesson. I don't know, man. They've taught Kian many lessons. They've taught, uh, there was an hour long game I played against Mesk recently uh, that, uh, you know, we'll probably post the FP VOD of that if it ever gets uploaded. Uh, not publicly, but you can check the Discord server for it if you're if you're curious. He, uh, he played a, uh, a match, he recorded his perspective and uh, it was him enduring for like an hour and me being unable to close because of his, his, you know, pretty adequate defense there. Um, and so like, they've taught everybody a lesson, right? In this case, the map is small enough and like in def is condensed enough that the ion cannons with their, again, they have 36 maximum range. They can sh target stuff all the way up here. Like it's kind of wacky to think about because you're just not used to that in StarCraft, right? Especially if you're still getting used to CMBW. But that's the range that these things have. And so, the uh, as I was saying to DF, when, like, inevitably we allow ion cannons to lift off and, each, and you know, all this other stuff. Um, well, which obviously is going to invalidate this one over here. And, uh, yeah, so, like... The best, I was telling DF, like, yeah, obviously everybody's been looking for ex better defenses for the other races, and this up next update's gonna have movable ion cannons. Um, and he's, all he said was, uh, the the best defense is a good, or best offense is a good defense, something like that. I always forget which way it actually goes. But yeah, that's the, that's the kind of funny shit that you, you can expect in the future. Ion cannon creep, it will happen. The ion, ion crawl. Like, most people think that ion cannons can't lift off because of a balancing idea, right? It's like, oh, I understand, Pronogo. 
I know you like to never have any exceptions to any of your rules and your design. Oh, we had a we had an Anthelion teleport somewhere. Oh, well, that's short lived. Oh my God! It targeted the <laughs> it targeted the vessel. Holy shit, dude! That was the spookiest thing I've seen in a while. Where's it going? Why is he? Okay, he's gonna relocate it over there. Where is he? What's he doing? What's happening? Oh! oh! <laughs> True. So every time you task the Anthelion to move somewhere, it uh, redirects. Uh, it restarts the movement cooldown. That obviously is pretty lame. Uh, we would like the Anthelion to uh, do that a little bit differently. Uh, but obviously, it looked like uh, Ben was just right-clicking it, like, really close by. So, I don't know what's going on there. And I think Shambler is confused, and his confusion is causing Ben to also be confused. Because it didn't move that last time. Uh, it restarted the cooldown. You can actually see, I can't demonstrate it now. But if you mouse over anything in the game, and you mouse over the armor tooltip, and then right-click, you can see statuses. Uh, there's not really any example of this right now besides this. Where you can see status, Lazarus Agent. Um, and then including the stacks and stuff, right? So uh, here it says status none in that same spot. But uh, yeah, so that's something that you can check. And so that should actually tell you the movement cooldown, I believe. But I could actually be wrong about that. I might just say like moving <laughs> or something. Uh, it might not actually tell you specifically. But yeah, Anthelians by themselves are not going to hold up against the Terran defense. Um, there, there are uh, biotic bastions, dude. They used to be biotic base, but I've changed it. Because it's more epic this way. There's a mason hiding there. Do you guys remember in the StarCraft Let's Play where a fucking civilian ran away from a bounce or something and was hiding behind a reservoir, a refinery? I couldn't see it. You guys remember that? I was sat there spinning for quite a while trying to figure out where he was. Almost 6,000 minerals for Ben. And I feel like the writing is on the wall. But you know what? He could surprise me. He is capping his geysers and his natural finally at 27 minutes into the game. And we do have a Monument of Sin. We do have a Synthetic Synod. Uh, so, I don't know that the Demiurge would be able to stay alive long enough to actually take over the Ion Cannons. Um, but you could turn his infrastructure against him. The biggest problem is that the Ion Cannons would probably just snipe each other. But it would still be an adequate use because even then you're like taking a target away, right? But there's just so many of these Ion Cannons at this point, right? We have five in the main slash natural high ground combo. And he is going to build another one over here, which is in range of, like, probably all of them. Maybe this one can't reach there, but I think it still can. And, you know, he's got a, a reasonably, you know, well-strength, uh, a high-strength army over here. But he doesn't really have a way in. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a sixth ion cannon over here on the low ground. And then so this will be the seventh ion cannon. And he hasn't been able to kill any of them. Uh, managing the counts of the Ion Cannons before they get out of hand is definitely something that I recommend doing. It's sort of like the Terran equivalent, the versus Terran equivalent, of when you're fighting against Protoss and they eventually, like even in CMB, or even in Vanilla, when they mass carriers, it's like at some point it gets unmanageable. Uh, so that's definitely something that I recommend for people is like, try to manage the, the counts here, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen for Ben. This has been a relatively low action game overall, right? We don't usually cast low action games. Um, but I, you know, Shambler keeps submitting replays that are usually pretty scuffed and uh, perhaps not actually worth casting. Now, again, when we went back to the Mystery Meat cast over, right? Like, that shit was funny. The first game was really, really wacky. I can't believe Mist pulled the dub on that. You should check that out if you haven't already. It's called The thumbnail says Enter the Salt Mine. The title is Working as Intended. But yeah, some of these games. Maybe they aren't super interesting by themselves. Like, this is just a, a quintessential Ion Cannon crawl, taking more map control, eventually being able to mass up a good amount of infantry. Now, the Empresses are a reasonable choice from Ben if he's trying to fight the army, but the Ion Cannons and this small map combine for a very, very difficult defense, actually. Like, what can you even do? Uh, there's all these Wardens over here. I don't know what they're for. Uh, the Crucible will make them attack faster, but... It doesn't increase their range. It doesn't increase their range far enough to hit the Ion Cannon, so unfortunate. People have been wondering what the uh, advanced defenses are going to be for some of these other races, and I can guarantee you there's not going to be anything like the Ion Cannon for the other races, guys. There's not going to be any long-range, mega-powerful things or, or anything of that sort, so... 
definitely don't suspect that that will happen. Definitely don't. It's not going to happen. But what you will see is some pretty significant, you know, useful defenses and whatnot. But just don't don't predict, like, artillery <laughs> like the Ion Cannon. That's just, that ain't it. Maybe you'll get 12 range, by the way. Maybe that's what you'll get. But not not 36. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Now, if uh, Shambler is committed, of course, he can continue to build ion cannons in forward positions. He is actually taking this back base now, which means that that will put him... On, he's on, now on even bases with Ben. Obviously, he has more workers, we can see. <laughs> even more wardens, why not? Um, and Ben still hasn't even saturated that ridge. This is like the ghost ridge for Mask in, in some ways. I, I feel like that's probably something that even... Now I'm going to be hyper like aware on myself, like, oh, shit, am I also doing the ghost ridge? Just like everybody I've cast it over. <laughs> like, that, I'll have to start thinking about that, too. Now, Crucible, this is pretty solid. If you feel like you can't afford to build another Monument of Sin, then, you know, put a Crucible down, right? It increases the speed at which you produce units. So uh, that I, that is actually a pretty solid idea. You can get them out surprisingly fast. At this point, he, he has three uh, Sovereigns and a couple of Empresses out. Uh, I think it's just a pair. He's going to scout to confirm the position of stuff over here, and there is indeed an Ion Cannon being built. So, actually, Shambler has enough money. He could definitely, you know, get gas and actually use it. He's um, not using his Iron Foundries. What is what is he doing? What is he focused on right now? He keeps building workers. He's setting up defenses over here. Okay, capping the geyser. All this stuff makes sense. But he has so much money, he's not really doing anything with it? What is he... Is he looking for places to issue orders for building structures or something? I guess. I guess that's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Bit, bit confusing. Now there's, uh, yeah, four sovereigns. It looks like three empresses, right? Crucible is out. Um, there will be another empress. So, you know. Oh, there's a didact as well. He's got the didact. I was hearing all the cloaking. For sure that means didact. Now with double didact and no detection, there is an anseal over here, I guess. So that, not exactly not. Yeah, there's, there's an anseal a few spots. But he can sort of like come in and start wreaking havoc on the infrastructure. The problem is there's enough bio here with all of the regen and the ion cannon support. I feel like Shambler can win the game without any of his structures in the main. If you just like selected everything in here and hit the delete key. I still don't think it would be enough. I think Ben would still win. I, unless it was a head-on fight. Maybe if it's a head-on fight, it's a bit different. Now what, okay, there's one other thing that can happen here. I showed it off at the end of Fraudarchy. Oh, it's not, it's not going to happen as you can see. But uh, now the, the cloaking is actually pretty legit because it's it kind of interrupts the ion cannon channel. So that is something, but there's a few spots here and there anyway. And uh, I actually can't see the didact, but I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Oh boy, they're all dying. It's all over. Yeah, it looks like the didact died and it just didn't reset the cloak part, but they, you can see they're still being targeted, so. Uh, yeah, a little bit disappointing that we did not see what I thought we were going to see, which was the double didact fly-in channel recall while the glassing is happening. That would have obviously annihilated whatever the didacts were in. Uh, we're, we're recalling over. Now, the problem is you have to do it in a spot where you're not going to get instantly yeeted. Uh, but I actually feel like if you did it over here or you did it over here or something, like the Sentinels wouldn't kill the Didact in time. Maybe over here they would because there's so many. Over here is like a safe spot. Over here as well. That's kind of what I thought maybe Ben would try to do. But I don't think he's a, he's a, he's a dad, dude. He doesn't have time to watch all the Fraudarchies. He doesn't know what, everything that's going on. Yeah, he doesn't even fully saturate his second aquifer in the natural. So, yeah, a bit unfortunate there. He is going to continue playing out to the bitter end. But I, yeah, I think uh, this game. Wait, what? I think Shambler might be high. Maybe he just now realized that he wasn't using Antikathons and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this a little bit. And uh, we'll see if there's another conflict happening. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the bit, key takeaway there, he could have done the trick shot that I was talking about with the... Dude, this is fucking World War I in space or something. That's what Shambler described the Ion Cannons as, and that's exactly how I feel looking at this. 
All right, so we do have a little bit of an army movement here. Maybe there will be some action at the very end of this. But yeah, I think, you know, failing the trick shot, not doing the trick shot, I'm not sure what would have been a good move here, right? Like, it's actually really hard to think about that. Um, but Didact plus Sovereign, with that trick shot in mind, can definitely do some serious damage. Like, even in this particular... I think the Didact's already dead. But he could definitely have... Oh, he's going to try to go for the glassing. It's not going to work. Oh, here's the Didact. So he could even... Like, even now, it sounds silly. It's like past the time that he can do it now. But even in this moment, right? Like, as this is channeling, he could have recalled that Star Sovereign like five feet to the left and wiped the entire army. Would have annihilated everything that anti Cathans included. But, unfortunately, that ain't going to happen. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that he's just sitting in the fucking damage fields. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think he's doing that intentionally. anti Cathans get uh, range and attack speed bonuses based on how many uh, units have died near them. Which you can see based on the range here. Oof. From downtown. Well, we got to see some interesting high-tech techniques including the techniques of not actually doing much, but that's okay, because uh, game's over. GG. I assume. <laughs> that's most definitely GG. See? From downtown as well. Ben saying what we're all thinking. Yeah, I think uh, the main thing that could have been done differently here is definitely, like, any pressure before the ion cannons go up and any attempt at like trying to use some of the tools at your disposal, di double didact recall, definitely a good idea, but he got it super late. And at that point with no witnesses to actually scout ahead, he had no information about where a good recall spot would be. So I think this is a really big problem where like it was a lack of info, a lack of early pressure and very slow to adapt to the things that are the answer, like some of the answers to this, right? Like even Shambo was saying in chat, uh, LanFX with DWeb, a D field as it is now, disruption field, obviously would have uh, helped quite a bit. But even beyond that, like, say you don't have the LAN effects out, um, you know, see if you can double didact recall some glassing star sovereigns or some army or whatever while you're distracting the ion cannons with an attack in the front with some zealots or something. Even just a little bit of something would distract them long enough to start their channel. Maybe they even fire some shots. Maybe there's some friendly fire at the front lines. Meanwhile, you're taking out the main, the infrastructure, the ability to train more. Like, I'm pretty sure the Daedala dies in one channel of Star Sovereign now that I think about it. Obviously, you can lift it off and then it won't take any damage. But while it's lifted off, it can't be doing anything. And so that's assuming that, like, he even recognizes that his Daedala is under attack at that point, right? And so these are all things that could be done. Uh, obviously, it is maybe a little bit surprising to people that you can even recall a, so a Sovereign while it's channeling. But I guarantee it can be done. I'm looking forward to seeing when it happens to an actual player in a game other than the Fraudarchy one, which I did after a drop, so it wasn't even legit. But, you know. It's a legit thing. I, I look forward to seeing the trick shots. Anyway, that was the cast over today. We'll look for something that's a little bit more entertaining the next time we go into a cast over, hopefully tomorrow. Stay tuned and find out.